Hi, I'm Bob Johnson. I'm one of the medical librarians at the Biomedical Library at UCLA. This tutorial will talk a little bit about using PubMed. If you're connecting to PubMed from off campus, make sure you're connecting using either the UCLA VPN or the MedNet VPN. Either should work. There are many options for finding citations using PubMed. In fact, the database makes it really easy to find something. What I hope this tutorial helps you learn is that it's a little harder to find the right thing, the exact thing that you want to find. So we're going to be talking on about some basic features of using PubMed. We'll talk about using the advanced search function, using Boolean operators, um, using some of the limits in PubMed, and signing on with my NCBI. Now, logging on to PubMed with my NCBI is not necessary, but it can be useful for saving search results and search strategies. Click login to either log in or sign up for an account. This is what the login page looks like. And at the bottom, there's a sign up. You can sign up for an account there. So I've logged into PubMed and I've started my search. I'm looking for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS. When I type in POTS, the database gives me all sorts of options. And so I've selected POTS syndrome. I clicked that uh, from the options. And this is what my search results look like. I have 921 results. Um, and just looking at the first few, I can see that this search looks good. I'm happy with it, and I want to save the search so that I can refer to it in the future. So in order to do that, I'll click Create Alert, and then I get the alerts page, and it's the search has a name, the, it shows me what search terms I've used, and it asks me if I want to use uh, email updates, and I don't, so I clicked No, and then I clicked Save. Now when I go to my, my NCBI uh, dashboard, you can see that POTS syndrome is one of the searches that I've used, and there are zero new results, which makes sense because I just ran that search today. So there shouldn't be anything new from what I just searched. I'm going to go back to the database. So here in POTS, in, in PubMed, we're looking at the POTS syndrome results. And if I want to look more closely at what the database did, I can click Advanced. So I click the Advanced link. And now I can see exactly what the database did. Using the advanced screen allows me to know precisely how PubMed is using the terms we entered. So it looked for POTS at, in all fields, just looked for that POTS acronym. But then you notice it did something different with syndrome. It expanded it and gave me all these permutations of the word syndrome, including something called syndrome mesh terms. Mesh is, just stands for medical subject heading. So that's the official term used by the database. One way to use mesh terms is to get ideas for searching uh, your uh, content, right? So I used the word POTS, P-O-T-S syndrome, but you can see that in the mesh heading, POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So I'm gonna try searching using those exact words. And it's actually a good practice to use the full word rather than the acronyms. So I can add that to my query box in advanced search. And instead of just clicking search, I wanna to add to history so I can compare the numbers of results. So I add to history. And now you can see that my results are different searching the full terms versus the acronym. And you can see that I have more results uh, using the full terms. And I can use Boolean logic to combine these results and try to figure out where there is overlap or if they're giving me all the same results. Boolean logic is just a mathematical way of comparing sets of in data, sets of information. So when we use and, um, we can use, we're looking for concepts that are overlapping, where both concepts show up. So in this example, fever and acetaminophen, or probably treating fever with acetaminophen. We're looking at fever. We've got one set of results. We're looking at acetaminophen. There's another set. And we want the overlap. That's what AND does for us. It gives us that overlap where we get both concepts appearing. Now, we also know that acetaminophen and Tylenol are synonyms. So if I'm looking for acetaminophen or Tylenol, I don't want the overlap because I, either one works. I want either of them, either or, right? So this is, or gives us all those results. So with our, with our example, we're looking for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So I can click the ellipsis, those three buttons and say, add query. That adds it to the search box. 
And then I can say, add with or, my next search, POTS syndrome. And that search gives us 1400 results. Now I can combine this with the word COVID because I'm really looking for POTS syndrome with COVID. So I put the word and with COVID and now I can run that search. So we've got, you can see that the search is run in the upper search box, it's right there. And we have 145 results. If I want to narrow these results down, I can use the limits or filters, which are on the left-hand side. So the filters come preset, but if I want more or additional filters, I can click additional filters and that will give me more ways to search, whether it's using age groups or different specific languages or other article types. So I've gone ahead and limited my initial search with this, which is POTS or the words postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So that was 1400 results roughly. We limit it to review articles and that gives us 273 results. So that's using advanced searching, Boolean logic, our filters, and our My NCBI account. So I hope that that helps answer some of your questions about PUD, PubMed. If you've got more questions, please feel free to let us know. And thanks very much.